Good morning and welcome to another hot and steamy day at Utopia Farms. We did get some rain last night. It came in. We, I don't know what the tornado warnings are about. We didn't even get a breath of wind, let alone a tornado. But we got about half an inch of rain. Oops, tripping over things. Which uh, wasn't too much, but yeah, at this point we are, every little bit counts. And we're happy for that. So probably we're not gonna do a lot of chores today because it's scorching, but we're gonna head over now and see who the ram of the day is and see what else is happening in the barn. So come on and join us. Okay, we have another sheep of the day today. <laughs> this time we have a Dorset. Arnie said he was gonna do a use today, but he decided to brave the Dorsets after all. So this is a ram lamb. And he's going to get a manicure before he gets to go on his halter. And uh, he's very, very hot. He needs to be sheared. Supposedly tomorrow. Oh, you took a grade. <laughs> well, that's why he's got red and green, I think. What? Hi. Well, this is the sheep of the day. Different type. Oh, you cut that off a little bit, eh? If he doesn't show up, uh, if the shearer doesn't show up on Monday, I'm going to start sharing him. <sighs> well, it's too hot for them. Hi, buddy. You can see he's got, I'm thinking he's got two inches of wool. Yeah. And he was born in January. Gotta come off. Well, even the guys that were sheared er earlier have grown back quite a lot. Dorsets grow their wool a lot faster than Suffolk. It's too hot. These sheep won't eat. It's too hot and humid, yeah. Well, you know, if, if we weren't, weren't in air conditioning, we wouldn't be eating either. He says, but I'm a grade. I don't need to show. Not too bad, but I seem stronger than that. He's not in the mood today. Hey, buddy, it's hot, isn't it? Hey, it's hot. Hey, well, we got to pick our uh, show sheep, eh? Probably we won't be, show even in a commercial class, I doubt we would do a, a dorset, would we? I, just take, uh, I would just tie him up and just take the top right off. Uh, let, let the heat out. He's got to get rid of the heat. Well, hopefully he's here tomorrow. Isn't tomorrow shearing day? Yeah. Hope it's not like this. This is the perfect weather for a thunderstorm today. I'm sure it is going to be like it's this tomorrow. Uh, just a tiny chimney. Actually, could be mistaken for a bird nest. Come on, show them your bird nest. Hi, honey. Uh, You're really nice. That a little little hole like that. How much difference is that going to make? Looks like a blowout. That's why he's warm. He's actually sweating. You can feel how wet, feel how wet he is. Feel that right there. And they don't want they don't want them wet when they shear them. But this is humidity wet now. Because if he was sheared a month ago, it wouldn't have been this hot. It feels way better. Than that. It feels way better already. Really, Arnie? <laughs> well, you better hold his head steady. Hold his head. You can't just do it freehand. You can poke him in the eye. You're a very pretty boy. Oh, Arnie, right by his eye like that and his ear. Can't see. Okay, let's go back. Poor sweet, poor guy. Yeah, the well, it's so humid. No, he shouldn't hear. I know, Arnie, but he's not here. Very cool out here. Come on out here. It's very cool out here. Come on, buddy. Sorry. Come on, buddy. Let's go back to your friends. Look at buddy. He's relaxed. Okay. I'm going to get 
the bottles. I don't think anywhere is a cool spot today. The little rain that we've been getting is actually making it more humid. <laughs> Usually rain cools it down. Oh, they're eating my corn. Hi. Hi, you guys. How you doing? And those guys back there are eating the corn. <coughs> now, how is he supposed to grow a cob if he eats the corn? Is that yummy? Okay, we'll bring you back, honey. It's too hot. Hi, sweetheart. I only got the wrong sheep. Or Dorset, he's well behaved. You're doing a really good job, honey. For those of you who have only a few sheep and can't get a shearer, get a pair of really sharp scissors, the fairly large type. The sheep love it. You just tie them up like that. If you have really friendly ones, they'll just sit there for you. And uh, trim it off. It's better than nothing. Um, obviously, if you have 400 sheep like we do, you can't do this for everybody. But um, if you have a few, there's no harm done. It's kind of therapeutic. Like Arnie was supposed to just take a little bit off his back, and now he's addicted. Really? Once, when, well, once you get on a roll, you don't want to stop. Hi, sweetheart. Does that make a, you feel a little better? See, he had a haircut. Doesn't he look lovely? Now, now you look really lovely. But you're still panting. Yeah, the humidity is like 100% today. Oh, you want some water. So going very much some water. Yeah. I actually got these scissors at the grocery store. No frills. I think they were $4.99. Um, I've had hand shears, the proper sheep shears, you know, and I couldn't use them. They didn't work for me. I think you have to have a skill to use them. So I find these are really easy, and when they get dull, you just buy another pair because they're really cheap. Hi, buddies. Guys are walking really slowly to the field. They're panting already before they even hit the field. I'm guessing they're not gonna stay in there. They're gonna do an about face very shortly. Today is so humid that you don't even have to work to start sweating. Angel, don't drink the puddles.
Yeah, plenty of water without drinking puddles. Probably gonna keep today's video very short because I can see this is way, way too hot. We gotta go to get groceries today for the shearer again to make sure he has snacks and meals. Well, for the past few days, someone has been making his desires known. And I'm not talking about Arnie for once. Who's that? Buddy? Buddy? Are you in the house getting some cool air? He came in the house. Sassy, our black cat, hissed at him a few times. Mother cat thought he was kind of attractive. And then he starts lying on the chair, begging in the kitchen, totally acting like he's always been a house cat. Probably was something. Oh, look at him. He's just laying on your knee. Probably something from Toronto. Bother cat. Couldn't deal with it and said, well, drop it off at the farm. Oh, look at him. Did you tell him what he was doing when he was kneading you the other day? I didn't, honey. <laughs> he was on Ernie's knee and he was kneading with his paws because he was so happy. And then he started trying to nurse. <laughs> oh, isn't that funny, huh? Jeez. But yeah, he's acting like he totally belongs in here. Don't irritate him, Marnie. He's trying to relax. Is he purring? Maybe you should go out and get yourself a supper, buddy. Uh, you know, three, three meals. He said I had a chicken salad sandwich for lunch. So, I think you realized a while ago I had some trouble with this tractor. I thought, I thought the muffler was broken right here. But it wasn't broken. Right in there, there's about a there's a two inch flange in there. It was rotted off, and that's what broke. So they were pretty nice about it. They ordered the brand new muffler. Uh, they did, and we didn't need it, and they sent it back. And uh, the little two inch flange was a pretty cheap fix. So I appreciate that. They did a good, good job on that. But I'm going to tell you another little story. I probably shouldn't tell you this story, but I'm not really happy with the story. But I'll tell you what's happened here. Uh, so this this is the machine that I picked around bales up with. It's just a skid steer with a pair of clamps on the front, and those clamps operate with. A cylinder right there. You see that cylinder? So that's a pretty, it's a pretty basic cylinder. It's uh, it's quite common. Uh, all, all most, a lot of farm machinery um, operate on that cylinder. It's a twenty-inch uh, spread on that cylinder. They're very common. Uh, they've gone up a little bit in price now. So what happened was, is uh. Uh, I'll show you what happened on the old one here. So what happened was, is that thread right there stripped, and that uh, fork at the end there is uh, moving back and forth. That's the second time that's happened to that cylinder. Uh, you can rebuild them, but by the time you buy parts for that cylinder, uh, it's not worth your time to fix it. Just purchase a new one. Like I say, they're quite common. The the all the the corn planters, uh, my seed drill at the back, 
uh, the old motor conditioners all used to have those 20 inch cylinders. So the punchline of that cylinder is, <laughs> is that cylinder is not really made uh, through any of any of the of the any of the big companies. Okay, yeah, that's pretty well the private company that's making all these cylinders. So Mr. Green really doesn't make a cylinder anymore. Not that my knowledge or Mr. International or Massey or any of those companies, they're made by private companies now. Um, as far as I know, there's only one company building all these. So I went to Mr. JD to get a new cylinder on that machine. And I got a quote for $300 for that cylinder. Uh, $300 for that cylinder uh, and shipping on top. So I'm the last time I got an order in like that of that size, it was about $100 to ship it. So it was $300. It might be around $400 to get the cylinder to my farm. And then I had to, and then I had to install it. So I went to a place. I went to a place called uh, Princess, uh, Princess Automotive, I think it's called. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's basically, um, it's basically a dream for a man to be in that store. They sell everything, like lights, jacks, fittings. They just sell everything. It's just a dreamland for, for a guy. And that exact cylinder for $300 plus shipping at Mr. Green was $150. Bucks. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I can understand $50 or less, $50 or more for green, but at more than double the price. Yeah, just a little heads up on that. I don't like to say that because uh, the dealership really looks after me quite well. And it's, and it's not really, and it's not really uh, the dealership's fault um, when they done that. It's more management. Uh, so, a little short uh, story about the dealership. Uh, I'm not a young man anymore. So when I was a child, when I was a child, a uh, dealership started down the road and it was my neighbor. Uh, I won't mention his name. He's a real nice fella. Uh, he finished high school. He uh, answered an ad in the paper. And uh, at that point, uh, John Deere uh, wanted a dealership in this area. There was an ad in the paper actually. He took the ad up, and that's how he started the dealership. And uh, he used to tell me, he said, business was so bad when I started, he said, uh, one of the months of June or July, the whole month, he said, I only sold four bolts. That's all he sold for the whole month. So he said he was struggling to, uh, to, do, to run a dealership. And uh, the dealership did fantastic. Uh, well, John Deere is an extremely good name in machinery. But the dealership did fantastic for for the whole life of his, his life. He's 80 some years old now, the guy. He just sold out, sold the dealership out. So that's a little short story about that dealership. It's always been my neighbors. It was extremely handy for me, extremely convenient. And he sold out. But this is what I have wrong with society. So he sells out. So he basically bought a dealership that had no value at all. I won't mention the rumor what he, what he sold the dealership for because I heard rumors. It's not a fact. I just heard rumors. It was quite a bit of money, more than I have. <laughs> um, so now what's wrong with the dealership? The dealership now has formed a debt. So they want to pay up the debt because they had to buy him out. So now the whole dealership is not friendly anymore and everything is outrageous prices. So I figure on, yeah, they want to pay up the debt to break even to start making money. So that's where that cylinder comes in. 300, probably a $400 cylinder. I went to Prince of Automotive, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I don't know if you recognize that store, um, but they have hundreds of cylinders in stock. Which actually, a little bit of a long story, um, John Deere didn't, or JD, <laughs> be careful what I say there, uh, they didn't have one in stock. It had to be ordered in. 
So a little heads up, a little bit, a little bit of a, a heads up for farmers that uh, want to make a, a small farmers that have a hard time in the society to farm. Uh, Princess Automotive really gave me uh, a, a real edge, and yeah, I really shouldn't say it because John Deere, or JD, actually uh, uh, been very good to me. It's just new management. Uh, the debt is actually not friendly anymore. So I don't know why I'm venting out on that. Maybe I shouldn't be like that. Just get over it. But just a little story. There's my manure pile, but I don't know if you can see it or not. It's uh, actually a pretty good temperature today. I mean, it's, it's quite hot. Uh, I'm actually getting quite used to the heat. Let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit. So the sheep are all out in the long grass grazing. Well, I know that's not a nice picture because that's my manure pile. But those are all the lambs. But anyways. So I'm going to feed a few round bales of hay. Just took some more hay in uh, yesterday. You can see how much the sun has faded the first hay. Got some fresh hay in, got it stacked up. I'm hoping we're cutting hay again on, today is, um, today is Sunday. I'm hoping Wednesday, they say three days good weather. I'm gonna mow some more hay down. Uh, it's not too often I'm cutting hay in July. Um, first cut hay, so it's lost its quality a little bit. But it is what it is, so. Uh, we're sharing tomorrow morning if uh, really good luck uh, if everything turns out well I'm really hope he shows up because the sheep are suffering a little bit with the heat I want that wool off so I'm going to feed some round bales I guess we're going to call that a day and uh, Lynn's going to start preparing supper supper for me and her and I'm going to feed some round bales and I guess uh, Lynn will be talking to you in the morning so I hope you have a great night and I hope to see you in the morning. So, thanks for uh, looking at us. Thanks. So we're gonna call that a day at Utopia Farms. I'm standing behind, beside this little nest here. All those little wrens went back in there and they have a nest of babies in there. And I don't hear them right now, but this, the little wren is actually quite friendly. So he doesn't mind if we stand here and he'll go in and out with us right here. But it means that I have to lock all the cats in the house because I don't want them after any of the baby birds. Anyway, that was an aside. I hope you enjoyed your time at Utopia Farms. If you did, please give us a like. Um, tell your friends about us so we can get some more views up there. And subscribe and comment and do all that stuff. Because we, I especially really do, do love to hear from you. And uh, I feel like I feel like it's a bunch of friends, and when I don't hear from someone for a while, I actually start wondering if everybody's okay. <laughs> so anyway, shearing is tomorrow. What do you think? We should we do a vote on that? Will it happen? It better happen because it's gone far enough. So wish us luck on that. Until then, bye for now. <laughs>